personal wine While Logan's speaking his mind Dives into things that he likes To learn the process behind Come and hear a little chat, little this, a little that A podcast with no limit, a cap And a host that can flow, we can spit a nice rap TPP, man, it's where it's at You can listen on the shit instead of scrolling through Twitter Or maybe on the plane to the Xanax Get you take a listen in your car on your way to work And then at work cause your boss is a jerk And you ain't trying to hear what they have to say You know that report was due yesterday Too late to take a break with your boy It makes a noise when I get to the point Y'all, this is totally potpourri We can talk about Okay, Logan, my friend, the powerful Logan Michaels. Hello, welcome to another edition of the Totally Potpourri Podcast, Podcast. Tuesdays with Pinky. Oh, we should sing that at the same time. What? The, the totally, uh, you, this you say totally, how you said it. That say, one? No, say it, like just how you said it. Totally Potpourri okay. yep. Podcast, on, like on that? three though, yeah. So. Okay. Three, two, one. Totally Potpourri Podcast. Oh, we're, now we're singing. <laughs> I was we're singing. Rap- You're, you got I was the, supposed to rap it? You have the more manly voice. I have mm. the more... Um, A feminine side. Fernando. No. Uh, what is it called? The, soprano? The, the soprano, yeah, whatever. The tenor? You're a tenor. How was your weekend? Film. Weekend was fantastic. How was your weekend, brother? brother? You tell me everything about it right fucking now, Oh, brother. damn, dude. Okay, well, my weekend was uh, pretty awesome, man. Um, what did I do? Shit. I... You fixed that tone when you're talking to me, brother. Dude, I don't even remember what I did last weekend. <laughs> Talk to me like a man, brother. <laughs> okay, like a man? Like a real man? Uh, how, what is Some to be a man? ass little boy, Maybe we'll brother. talk about that. What does it mean to be a man? You have a ball, a pair of balls, and a nice schlong. That's it? There's, pro- there's that plenty do not of lactate. transsexuals out there that probably have a nice big cock and a pair of nice balls. Two nipples that don't lactate. Mm. Is that what it really means? A sense of dignity. You know? What I'm saying, what I'm kind of getting to the point of is that there's like these standards to be a man. You know, like oh, yes, gender, I was kind of raised where I had a dad that did all that manly stuff. But never really taught me too much. While you played with the dolls? I take the blame for it, too, in some ways, because I never really tried to learn too much. But, like, you know, like all that car stuff, that's manly, right? Or, yeah. like, liking guns, that's manly, right? Uh-huh. But what does it really mean to be a man? Is it to be a respectful, outstanding citizen? Is it to be, like, a tough guy? It's it's really yeah. weird sometimes. If you were it's to like ask Jordan Peterson that question, you know? if you were to ask Jordan Peterson that question, I'm sure he would say something along the lines of the heroic journey. Yeah. Bearing the burden on your shoulders. The story of the man who does the work that needs to be done. Not saying that women can't do the work that needs to be done, but we're talking about the heroic journey of the man bearing the burden of a passing of a loved one and Bearing right. the emotional burden that we're supposed people to not may, be able to know, like cry or show our feelings, being that boulder or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we're supposed you know? to be the ones that are supposed to be able to handle things emotionally. Which I think emotional Just, intelligence is that though. You know, it's an, mm-hmm. it's uh, but men can cry. Damn it, men can cry. I cry. I just watched this I new show. Time, I watched a pilot of this new show last night. It's about this girl who can like. She's in an MRI machine during an earthquake, and she's a coder working in San Francisco at the startup. And then after the earthquake and the MRI machine, something happened, and now she can hear people's thoughts as musicals, though. So, like, whatever they're thinking and feeling and whatever, it comes out as a song, and they break out in the song and everything. That pilot... I I cried, da, 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 da. I'm sad. I cried three times, dude. Really? <laughs> I cried three times. I cried. You finished the first time. Just like, oh my god! It oh was my so, god! It still got me. It was so emotionally beautiful, man. Like she was going through it, and then this other guy was going through Isn't it. And it then her that, dad like, was going through. Film it. can bring that out of you. Yeah, well, we see ourselves in it. You know, we can relate oh, for to it for sure. But like, yeah, dude, I hate how 
easy it is for me to cry at like a film. Yeah. But like if some real life shit happens, I try my best to fight it kind of mm-hmm. thing. But with, with film and stuff, I just kind of like choke it up. Let the sad parts and just kind of let it all out, you know? Yeah, man. For well, sure. Sometimes you can't watch those movies with friends, you know, because you, you know it's going to tear up. I caught my dad one time. I don't see him cry, like, at all. He does not show him. His, his mom, my grandma, died. Mm-hmm. I didn't see a single tear from this guy, you know? Like, I'm sure he had his time by himself to cry. The only time I saw a tear from this dude was at the end of Armageddon, <laughs> where, where Bruce Willis dies at the end. I'm just, Wait, I, I didn't know that. I haven't seen Armageddon. Oh, shit. I just spoiled Armageddon for you. Oh, my God. I was going to watch it tonight after oh, the yeah? podcast. Don't want to close my eyes. Don't want to fall Spoiler asleep, alert, guys. I, I think that's not the first time you spoiled it. But anyways, he cried sure. at the end. And he cried at the end, and I was like, Dad, are you all right? Cause I, I just walked in on the credits. And yeah, it's just see a big old tear on his face. Like, I don't see dad cry like that. <laughs> yeah. My dad usually took a falls movie. Asleep see? Took a movie. Some real life shit happened to him. His mom died. And he held it together somehow for us, kind of thing. But, oh shit, I said kind of thing again. I After Why recording can't you myself. Kind of thing. I, when I was like doing that post editing for some of my recordings, I'm like, God, if I say kind of thing and s- stuff like that, Again, I'm going to punch myself in the throat. <laughs> yeah. I just got like, sick of me hearing it. I'm like, I, I could talk better than that. Yeah. So I'm trying to be more conscious of saying those those things that you just fill space with, like the but, um, just so you know, common speech shit that you kind of uh, we kind of think. Some speech therapy. <laughs> figure out. We can do some speech therapy yeah. on, on our off time. Oh, okay. Um, I will be your enforcer then. Anytime I hear some bullshit coming out of your mouth, yeah. I will make sure to please tell it to you like it is, brother. Please do, dude. I need it. We're being in shape, bro. Let me tell you something. I'm going to rip you out. Oh, damn. I'm going to tear you down. Oh, wow. I'm going to make you shout. <laughs> I'm going to make you call for your mommy, bro. <laughs> See, I don't even know anything about wrestling. That's you. I just, I know the voice. It's me. Speaking of that, dude, yeah, I had a busy weekend. Well, this weekend's the busy weekend. I just got done recording my third fall podcast, which is me and my boy Half Pint, Kyle Adams. We got our own little wrestling podcast. Half Pint? Half Pint. So follow him on Unpopular Media. media. (laughs) Bam. Whoops. (laughs) Wrong plug. Unpopular Media. Uh, You can follow that shit. That's on Spotify, too. But yeah, I'm doing double time today, man. So that's why I'm going to be slurring all over the place i'm fatigued right now but this coffee's got me hyped so let's do this bro yeah that keto fuck yeah that uh doing double time today keto creamer and then we got mini rapalus this sunday uh, technically tomorrow but they yeah won't what be is mini rapalus when what is mini rapalus what is mini rapalus you say it is the hottest new hip-hop showcase slash open mic i usually have about four acts every month at part wolf minneapolis which is on cedar avenue and uh, this line is going to be super dope. It's acronym Uncle T, Miho, Just Wolf. Open mic at the end of the show to get like some nice and talent. That's how I kind of started up. So I'm I wanted come to give to that, back. Man. You should come and do a song for yeah. sure. I know acronym Uncle T and Miho. Miho recorded one of my little open mics that I did one time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just surprised that like I thought it would take a while for me to get something like this booked. But mm-hmm. I had a successful like album release show there. And they're like, yeah, that they didn't. I didn't have to bring it up. They were just like, hey, you want to do like a monthly thing? I was like, hell yeah. I thought it was at the underground or that one place, the Driftwood. It's not there. No, that's where that I uh, did an isolated event called okay. Mini Rapalus, and I wanted to do something monthly, but they didn't. That it didn't. Oh, good. The turnout well, wasn't good. It was just spot, basically really the people like the showed up there too much. Hmm. I'm glad yeah, it that was a, it's at a different spot. Uh, yeah, yeah, Part Wolf is so much better than the Driftwood for sure. Yep. It's a o- more open space. It's on a cooler kind of area of the town. Yeah. I didn't like the Driftwood. That was yeah, I didn't like it that much either. Too cramped mm-hmm. in there. Exactly. Feeling like. So, yeah, I was, I'm was. i just like blessed to be able to do this. Like It's mm-hmm. it's, good, it's a big learning experience, but you got to kind of go through the hard way. And like it's yeah. just one of those things I'm like, hey, it's, it's happening. It's on my lap. I'm going to make sure. And pull through with this every month to make sure that I can keep this going for as long as I can. Mm-hmm. But That's it's cool, man. I'm life. already trying to give back to the cities. Like I'm already got in a, in a spot where like I felt so blessed for having to know people that I can get up there and do like open mic stuff, like the Fifth Element thing and just local dope shit and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to kind of be in that same realm and got my outlet to do it. It's fun, man. 
It's cool. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Well, that is going to be tomorrow night. So if you are listening, uh, you probably won't He's hear about it come out in like two weeks, though. <laughs> but this, so this guy hosts come one. Out this Tuesday. It's this next guy Tuesday. hosts one every month. Every Sunday. Every month. Every second uh, Sunday. I just farted. If it was every month, every Sunday, that'd be every week. Yeah. So it's every second Sunday of the month. So the next one after this is February 9th. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting the axe book for that, trying so to lock it in. We got derailed, but what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a man? I think it means the same thing as being a woman. In what does it mean to be a woman? I don't think that there is any general sense of the word besides our natural inclinations and genetic intuitions or whatever. Whatever we were from shrews, when we, when we were shrews back in the dinosaur age, we were little shrews, mice running around. Uh, well, I don't know if that's purely accurate, but <laughs> is but that an we, accurate we, history? We evolved from shrews, is what I'm told. And so you change from the shrews into whatever, and then all of a sudden now you're a Neanderthal, and then all of a sudden now you're a Logan Michael. You call me a Neanderthal, bro? Yeah, dude. You but asshole. The thing is, men want to have sex with women. Not all men true but it's okay either way whoever you want to have sex with that actually okay can we (laughs) what are we getting at (laughs) i'm saying that's one thing that it means to be a man right that that we have a craving for sexual desires yeah i think so that's true i but i think all humans do right i think it's natural at some level but for a dude i really think it's like a physical need you know yeah, it's so easy for us to orgasm that it's something that we think about and do try to do all the time. I, think I it's imagine the same for, for women, women, women can have great sexual experiences, but for them, they know it's a lot of work for them to actually climax and make it totally worth it. You and know I bet nine I, times I out of ten, true. a dude would just finish before that shit would even happen. So it's almost not as they don't hold in on so much of a need for them to orgasm because. It takes a lot longer and a lot more work, and you don't you guarantee if you hook. It's not guaranteed that if you hook up, they're gonna orgasm. Okay, it well, is for a dude thing. pretty much. You go until he's done, right? All right. Well, I don't know if that's true. I don't think that's the case. Really? But when we have a female <laughs> guest on here, we'll go ahead and ask we'll her go straight ahead up. And ask. Hey, how are your sexual desires? Are they strong and <laughs> or are they fleeting? Does it take you a long time to climax? And if so, how long? Dude, some girls have never climaxed. Yeah. Some guys have never climaxed. I didn't climax until I was called, 11. Virgins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Not even virgins. It took me 11 even years to climax. Even virgins have climaxed because they probably have wanked it a few times. It took me 11 years to climax. <laughs> Just jerking it for 11 I years remember straight I remember I was what? in. I was, actually, I was more than 11 because I moved to Kenya when I was 12. And the first time I exploded was in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> Kenya in my apartment like the volcanoes of Kenya and I was on and I discovered <laughs> masturbation and so the hilarious thing is that I was on my bed laying down some movie wasn't playing in the background I think it was Robin Hood or something but I wasn't focused on the movie <laughs> I was I was just you know I don't even know what did, what got me to that part but then I remember when <laughs> this is totally potpourri man I remember when I erupted that <laughs> It came out of nowhere. That sexual eruption. <laughs> it oh. came it came out of nowhere, no pun intended. <laughs> I uh and then it, it shot up and landed on my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? I had no idea what to expect. I, I was, thought it was gonna be like um like when you shake up a soda and you got that fizz. I <laughs> thought it was gonna be fizzy. <laughs> it <dude>. Bubbles out. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. Like, I was trying so to get a little dick. fizzy. I was trying to get jizzy. When they say jizz, I'm like, I, honestly, I thought jizz is like first, fizz. The first time I ejaculated, I was concerned, too, because I didn't know it was going to happen either. I was a little nervous. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, this I was other liquid is coming out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Did your Not mom pee. ever catch you, like, doing your business? My mom caught me just looking at tits on the internet once. 
No, but I feel like... It was like... all loading all slow because it was dial-up. <laughs> like, it was getting to the point. I was like, just barely trying to see the tits, and she just came around right when the titties came out and loaded up. No, but like, my, parents, my parents did discover my uh, porn artwork. So when I was you like... just drew pictures of porn? When I, before I masturbated, when I was like... 10 or 9 or even You're just eight. being an artist, bro. I was drawing Artists like, draw naked people all of all the time. I was drawing boobs and stuff, you know. And <laughs> like naked girls, I was drawing boobs with my friend. I didn't have porn. So I was drawing boobs. And what I thought of boobs or whatever, you know, these boobs. I think I may have looked at porn <laughs> once or twice. They're like the triangles, right? <laughs> <laughs> like sandbags. No, um, Bags of sand. <laughs> from 40-year-old version. Yeah. Yeah, dude, sandbags. You ever felt them? Uh, Bags of sand. I had a friend who procrastinated in one of my physics class. We had a stupid teacher that didn't even like, look you in the eyes when he was teaching. He was just so bad that we just ignored him the whole class. Yeah. They, Him and one other guy would just draw dicks every page in my book. <laughs> <laughs> every single page. Like It was weird. It was like super bad. And you know, yeah, the guy super that, bad. The yeah. obsession with dicks. They Hill. were the guy from super bad. Mm -hmm. They're just drawing dick galore. And my dad actually found, I don't know why I, I didn't throw this away, but like at the end of high school, my dad found my book. And he's like, do you want this book with all these penises in it? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dad, those are my dicks. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I didn't draw weird, those, man. dad. It was like, I swear to God, 20 plus pages of dicks. Yeah. It was obsessive. But yeah. I was like, whatever do you guys do what the fuck you want. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get a good laugh and ignore this teacher. Yeah, dude. Man. Good times in high school. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> Not really. But, and, um, so, but just going back to my first masturbation story. Oh, so, yes. Titties. So then I discovered, no, that was just, I'm talking oh. about my parents discovered my porn. Oh, right, artwork. right. Yep. No, but my first masturbation story when when it exploded on my stomach or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. So after not, I after just after keep I that up. after I discovered after I discovered the wonderful baby gravy, you euphoric sensations of masturbating. I had this. I didn't have anything to. put. I didn't know about like putting in toilet paper or whatever. So I had this robe that was hanging in my closet. And I would always just go and unload in the robe. <laughs> oh! Why are you telling this on my show? <laughs> what the fuck? After this is like, our last Tuesdays with Pinky. Wait, after we get demonetized about jerking after, off in her robes. Good after, lord. After like a year, <laughs> the robe was just crusty. Oh! <laughs> Was it your robe? Uh, yeah. At least it was yours. I never, That's gross, I never dude. washed it, though, because I didn't wash clothes, and I didn't want my mom to touch it. didn't wash clothes. So it was just in my closet. Just, I would close my closet. I would open it up. <laughs> 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 and then I realized, and then I realized, oh, wait, you can just do it in toilet paper. What do you know? Get rid of the evidence. There was just something so, so soft about that robe, ass, though. Okay. <laughs> it, was very, it was something very soft and comforting so about soft, unloading in that robe. That is fucked up. It was comforting, like a well-watered fern. <laughs> well, people do like the sock thing, right? Too. That's weird. Mm, yeah. You come to a sock. I got a piece and they of have salt like a rag. Like it's so easy just to get some toilet paper. What the fuck? Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the robe. I have done a sock before though, when I didn't have Big anything around. Big old crusty around. tube sock or what? <laughs> My sock, whatever sock I was wearing. And then you put it back on, <laughs> and it's kind of like squishy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Extra grip inside your sock. Yeah, and then it oozes through into your shoes, so your mm. foot doesn't slide around. <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> it hardens up and it stays there. <laughs> nah. Oh man. Yeah. Fuck. What's the first? If that wasn't so funny. I had an, another topic to go off. No, of. but Shit. I was gonna say, what's the first sexual experience that you had with a female counterpart? It's like high school, about 17 years old. Yeah. What happened? It's the week before the big football game. The week of the big football game. Oh, man. Like a night before, actually. Mine was a football game, too. And, Carry uh, on. It was a big playoff game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I had this girlfriend at the time. Were you in the playoffs? Huh? Were you in the playoffs? Yeah. You played football? Yeah. You're so short. Running back, bitch. You're so I'm short. Shove, man. Back then, before my shoulders were all fucked, back at bench. That's what also hurt my shoulders. But oh. Yeah, I was... Hey, uh, good on you. So running, I wasn't like the best by any means. I just get no, my of course not. You're white, of course. I mean, <laughs> shit. But the whole team was white, so oh, well, then, that's why I got a chance, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, had this girlfriend a few months at the time, 
And it was kind of spontaneous in a way. We were just hanging out. And, like, she was just about to leave. But then I'm just all, like, kind of put my moves on her. And one thing kind of led to another. And uh, I think I turned on falsetto by the dream. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Which really set the moves and the motion. I must have been a douchebag, too. I was wearing these flat bill hats. I I was completely naked, but I still had the fucking flat bill hat. (laughs) I'm, like, fucking in this hat. Socks? Yeah. Oh, no. I had my socks off. So I was literally completely naked, but I still had my hat on. I don't know what, what the fuck was I think. What was it? Buck Hills? backwards ass hat. What? You said Buck Hills? No, like a flat bill hat. It was like oh, a Yankees what, what hat. What kind of hat was it? It was like, oh, dude, it was like total white boy Yankees. hat. Total white boy hat. It was yeah. like black with white and then like yellow in the middle. Mm-hmm. Super like 2000s kind Should of cap. Should have had a, a plaid shirt, too. <laughs> Just no <laughs> Oh, In my fall set up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like that. In my fall setter. How about you, sir? Mine was you pop in that computer chair? class in high school at what? Roseville Area High King, School. Wood, shut up. Swear to God. It's another one During of computer stories. class, I promise, right hand to God, I am not lying. We're talking about first sexual encounter. We're not talking about first sexual experience. I'm talking about a sexual encounter. Oh. So, in, oh, wait, in, what? Not like the first time you had sex. No, no, no. Sexual encounter. That's oh, I, was, I, I was telling you my virginity story. All right, well, story. well, all right, well too, oh, that's too fine. Late. Go for it. You, too you late. Go for it. Too late. I shared my piece. So, <laughs> computer class with this one girl, Brittany. Whoops, shouldn't have said her name, but there's a lot of Brittany's <laughs> out there. Oh, Anyways, Brittany's listening right now. Um, so, I don't even, I can't get into details of how it started or whatever. But basically, she had on Between like fifth or what? pretty loose, loose fitted pants or whatever, you know. And basically, she just gave me the permission to finger her during class. And so I remember getting in there, and it was very warm and welcoming. You really fingered that one out, didn't you? Uh, ah, bad it, pun. <laughs> it was really, uh, it was warm and inviting, and and um, pretty spacious. I kind of set up shop in there and, uh, <laughs> you know, went, went, did a little, uh, excavating or whatever you call it when you're searching through a mine, you know, like I was trying to figure yeah. out all the parts. I was kind of like doing anatomy class. Exploring. Yeah. A little bit. Like, you're like, Oh, what's it's this? a labia. And, and you know, yeah, exactly. Menora. Oh, this is the labia. Huh? Ah. <laughs> so, and basically I just fingered her. Wow. Yep. That's pretty much it. Wow. Way to go, kid. Yeah. <laughs> and that was pretty much all you've ever done for the rest of your life, right? That was the that was farthest the only I've gotten. You, the farthest you've ever gotten. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm saving myself for marriage, mm. except for my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I got little dick fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude, oh, I shit. thought I got pink eye earlier. I was scared. Because That's one of the answers. on you've, you've seen Cards Against Humanity, right? Or you played Cards Against Humanity, yeah. right? Yeah. That's one of the answers is... Dick fingers. <laughs> I had my. Uh, we played that at Christmas. Uh-huh. My family shows what our sense of humor is like. But one of the questions was, uh, what uh, due to certain conditions, blank is now banned on airplanes? And I, my answer was coat hanger abortions, <laughs> and we died for the longest time. Just picturing somebody getting a coat, a coat hanger abortion on the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get the middle seat, please? <laughs> I mean, they'd be fucked up. And I was just like, Oprah, we got to stop having you on the planes. We know about those abortions. So what was the question again? Um, It was like, it was one of those, like yeah, a yeah. Mad Libs type thing. But it's like, due to certain circumstances, blank is now banned on airplanes. Okay. So, so due to certain circumstances. Before, coat hanger abortions were fine, but now they're banned. That's yeah. kind of the joke. Yeah. But that's some fucked up shit. It would be hilarious this- if you actually saw one on... Not that abortions are funny. <laughs> Shit. Due to certain circumstances. It was something like that. No, I'm trying to think of one right now. Oh. Due to certain circumstances. But you got to play your cards. It's whatever the cards are. Do you have the card game? It's a good-ass card game. Oh, shit, you do have it. Okay, we have the choice between due to circumstances, necrophilia is now banned. Yeah, on there the you airplanes. go. 
Due to certain circumstances. Dick fingers. How about a new one? <laughs> now banned. Next on ESPN2, the World Series of Necrophilia. Ah, gross. Next on ESPN2, <laughs> the World Series of Fragile Masculinity. Next on ESPN2, the World Series of Girls. Ooh. Boring. I need Change more coffee, channel. bro. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Let's get some more coffee in this. Quick coffee break. But before I kill you, Logan, I must show you. Oh, shit. You're going to kill Multiple me? Multiple stab wounds in my holy Bible. Whoa. All right. I'm done. fucked up. I'm done with this bullshit game. Done with it. Pause. So you told me uh, when you lost your virginity, what was your first sexual encounter? Hmm. About ninth grade. I was dating. Just one chick again. And uh, I think we were just watching a movie at my house. It's kind of kind of sketchy because my parents are like just downstairs and shit. But keep the door cracked, Logan. Did the old HJ, and I did not know how far I was gonna spray. What's an HJ? Hand job. Oh, <laughs> you never heard of that before. Hand job. Hmm. What is this hand job? But uh, yeah, you know, first time hand jobbers aren't. It's not the best, but yeah, I fucking. Uh, underestimated how far that thing can uh, shoot out, and it like landed on her shirt. <laughs> yeah, oh my right goodness. up on like her shoulder. Like that shit went far, dog. Was she like, like happy whoa. about it? Uh no, not really. Yeah, you know, it was her shirt. Actually, it was her sister's shirt, so I guess she didn't give a fuck. But yeah, that was mine. You know, first time sexual experiences are kind of like not that cool. Although I know some people like they got like head like in fifth grade i was like what the fuck <laughs> that's real early that is early that's can early i tell you shit. something yeah breaking news as of january 10th whoa epstein the footage of his jail cell was got deleted right yeah it, it again deleted. The, the, everything's been goddamn deleted it's fucked up. So like, are you we see just his living neck? in a game or something? Like, is is life just a game? Like, what the pretty fuck much, is going dude. On? He might not even be dead. In some theories. Okay, that's crazy talk. Witness protection stuff. Stop it. Just saying. No. Do you see his face in the autopsy? No, but I saw parts of his body. Is it consistent? I don't think they show face. Do they show faces ever in autopsies? They showed his neck though, and it looked like piano wire was around his neck. That's disgusting. It's like it's like this like bloody kind of mess on the you're outside you're gonna make me throw up no we're not gonna show you it no but the thought of it alone kills but me i hate scary the movies. theory is that he took a bunch of like jumpsuits yeah i saw that and they had them there's no way it's gonna make him bleed like that right i mean i'm no expert but goddamn. no 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 but here's the thing it's too. like wrapping a, sh- a shirt around my neck is not gonna make me bleed like that here's the thing i i saw that picture of the jumpsuits all over and it's like this why are all the jumpsuits laid out all over the place? Like, it's like some setup or whatever. Wouldn't they keep it the way that it was? You know what I mean? Like, it's a crime scene. Yeah. But it should also, be preserved. I think there was some things that went down with the investigation where it, did, it wasn't treated like a normal crime scene. Like something like the body was moved or something before. Yeah, that's fucked. I want to do, I'm going to do a whole episode too. Okay. Eventually on, okay. on Jeffrey Epstein. I'm going to like take the notes and shit too to make sure it's right. But you should listen to uh, Devil in the Darkness, I believe it's called, on Spotify. It's like it's keeping up with the ongoing investigation, but it's got it's a really good um, podcast to kind of keep you updated on the whole scenario. Yeah. So I might get a lot of my information from that because it's really, really well documented. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll check that out. Devil in the Darkness. Devil in the I don't know who does it, but. I'm pretty so, sure that's what it's called. Let me ask you something. Yes, yeah, sir. the podcast, we were talking about Graham Hancock and some of his theories. And you mentioned something about Sumerians. Could you, would you mind going in a little deeper and telling me a little bit the history of what you know of Sumerians and Sumerian culture or whatever? I'll go with like whatever that was. I, di- I took an ancient civilizations course in my sophomore year of college, and I learned a little bit about the Sumerians. Although this class fucking sucked because it was a four-hour class on a Friday. And you know, Thirsty Thursday is a thing in college and shit. 
So people would go out on Thursdays because most people had like Fridays off for classes. I remember being lucky enough for that, but apparently not this semester. I needed to do this four hour class because that was the only way to fill that credit in. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we did learn about obviously ancient civilizations, but we learned about the Sumerians, which was one of the first civilizations. And they had this thing that my professor called stair step evolution. Where they kind of went from nothing to knowing, like from being able to document their cuneiform language and horseback riding and bronze working. It went from like nobody knowing what to do with that to just like, oh, all of a sudden we have advanced knowledge of it. And they also have in like their cuneiform documentation of saying that they believed that they were from this 10th planet called Nibiru, like an outer star planet that. They were taught all this information from uh, like a, a ancient uh, extraterrestrial race, and Zachariah Stitchin, who's a famous historian, was like the first one to kind of decode the Sumerian language. He has this tablet that's like famous on the internet, so look that up on like Google. But it's this tablet that he's holding of the entire solar system, like our solar system, all nine planets in their right spot, and there's a tenth planet on there which is supposed to be their planet or the the extraterrestrial planet. And the crazy part about that is that we didn't discover Pluto ourselves, Pluto in 1930. But they had Pluto on there and all these other planets that we have yet to even know about. Is it this? Yeah, yep. And I think the one highlighted in red is that 10th planet. I'd assume. Yeah, we can't see that. <laughs> it's working a little. Hey fuckers. <laughs> Let me tell you something about it. Yeah, so that, that shit's uh, it's it's crazy. Look into that kind of stuff. You gotta look into it, like Eddie Bravo. Look into it. Look into it, <laughs> dude. I don't want to look into it. I want you to tell me everything and download it into my consciousness right now. Sorry, I'm not the goddamn encyclopedia, bro. Put the information in my hard drive. Where's that up your butt? Tell me what I need to know <laughs> about a, the Sumerians. I just did. They're about Nibiru. Another planet, bro. Okay. Uh, but Nibiru is, yeah. This, I'll look it up. It's supposed I'll to be like this up. planet where we might have came from. I'll look more into yeah. it. Yeah, definitely look into that shit more. Yeah. So, Thank you for that. You're welcome, dude. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> Whenever you need me. Whenever you there. want me. Whenever you want me. Yo, should we do some Reddit on Reddit? I think it's about that time for Reddit on about Reddit. About that time, my friend. Reddit on Reddit. So what Reddit have you seen this Reddit. week? Reddit. I know you got some shit saved. I don't know if I've kept up with it too much. Because we read it on Reddit. Oh shit. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um Whoops, I was in the wrong. Alright. If you accomplish something good with hard work. The labor passes quickly, but the good endures. Mm. Meaning, if you work hard, the hard work that you put into it will pass quickly, the part that we dread, but the good of it endures. But if you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. So meaning, guys... Deep. Work hard because the hard work that's going to give you the good result endures. It's worth it. But do not go the easy route, the shameful route, in search of quick pleasure because Don't the cut pleasure corners. passes quickly, but the shame endures. <laughs> and that is a quote from Gaius Musonius Rufus from Fragment 51. Damn, dude. He went deep. But yeah, a lot of it's the process and the journey of it. That's what I like to think about when I'm going through music and things like that too to enjoy the process of it the 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 not knowing what how it's going to turn out and then end up seeing the end result of things that's what keeps you motivated to do it instead of having this instant gratification you know yeah we always want to just get to that result but then we don't get to enjoy the process of it all too dude i'm glad you brought that up we're gonna have to pause reddit on reddit for a quick second Mm -hmm. to bring in this that's fine um this breaking news breaking I, i am time what? You're I all of time. I am time, and you are time. We're made up of time. We're all 
ticking time bombs. We are ticking time bombs. So what I mean, I had this realization. Last podcast that we did, I was washing the dishes as you were heading out the door. And I got the thought of like, man, I got to work tomorrow, right? But I thought then I thought of time not on some linear scale of like, oh, I got to work tomorrow. More of like on a constant scale of that of which like it's really hard to explain and I will find a good way to explain it. But meaning, so, okay, so tomorrow is like right here, right? And I'm right here washing dishes. Yeah, okay, now me right here is like, oh, man, I got to work tomorrow, you know? But I'm you're go- already no. there in your yeah. future self. Yeah, like, like I'm going to be, be there. there. Right. I'm going to be so there. So why be all anxious about it? Why be anxious about mm-hmm. it, whatever, because I'm going to go to sleep, wake up, and then boom, I'm at work. Enjoy everything that happens in between that time. And then continue on enjoying, of course. But, like, washing these dishes, you know, like, look at the dishes, feel the water. Feel it like oh yeah oh man oh, look caress at that. Mm, that sponge caress oh that put it fork. all in those crevices oh yeah yeah put it in mm, between it's those like crevices fistons. <laughs> rub it dude rub it hard just rub it hard dude scrape all that grease off but then it's Lick like it if you have to like we don't have to worry about what's gonna happen because we're already happening right like that's already occurring in the future yeah so you're already kind of there already so you just got to trust in the process of getting there yep 100 so there's no need to worry about it i I always catch myself worrying about the future you gotta trust in the process of getting there right it's like it's almost like that donnie darko thing have you seen that movie where you can kind of see the path that he's taking like that's what trips him out like he knows where he's going because he sees this path, so like it's almost like he's got a predetermined future kind of thing. Oh, weird! But I don't that's kind of like that. Uh, that's kind of what you're talking about, though. Like you're gonna be there at work because your predetermined self is putting you there. Yeah, well, you know? it's more like you gotta make your money, you gotta survive. Exactly. But but if it, you could see your path, that's what you were. That's where you go yeah, next. You know. True. Well, I mean, like, and that's the thing, though. You can see you have plans and stuff, right? So, like, I may have plans this weekend of like. Say, for example, I was going to go to some crazy game, football game or something like next weekend, right? I'm sitting here and I'm excited about it. I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait to go to the football game. But if I take, if I just subtract all the time in between now and that weekend, and I'm just like, I'm going to be at that football game eventually, right? Then it's like I can stop like anticipating it and getting myself out of the present by like, comparing that moment that future moment to whatever i'm experiencing now Mm -hmm. and just accept that yes i'm gonna be there eventually and let me just forget about it because that's happening right now if you don't look at time like it's a thing you know like if time time, is an illusion yeah like it's that other way too it's an illusion it's a concept we have made up to keep each other on the same schedule Exactly. Basically. Yeah, yeah. To keep each other on the same schedule. And to like, everything is just happening right now. To mathematically right kind of map out our rotation around the sun and shit too. Mm-hmm. But just to keep a time frame mm-hmm. of our steadily decaying meat. But buckets. at the same time, we're existing in the past, present, and the future all simultaneously because yep. life is essentially like a giant projector screen, frame by frame. We just get to capture it in a way that looks like it's in one steady motion. But we're tiny little pictures, is how I like to look at it. Well, here's we're the moments. Thing. We're tiny moments, you know. Yeah, but it's like also on that note, our our brains, uh, cataclysm of consciousness. Are we are we projecting consciousness, or are we receiving consciousness? I think we're receiving it. Yeah. I don't know. Depends if we're actually the uh, the creators, you know, or are we the created. By we, you mean everything in this earth. Yeah, or just the we, how we can, like, perceive this reality. We don't know how it started or why we can, you yeah. know. But we do have this – we tapped into a, diff, a higher consciousness than most of these animals, you know, to kind of get a further understanding of what's going on. But we still have no idea what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So I feel like we're created because if we were the creators, we would know. That's having, like, that right knowledge, the knowledge of creation. So since we don't have that. I mean, we're creators in some levels, like art and things like that, but 
as far as life and creation of that, yeah, we I feel like we're created in a way that we don't really know because we're like we're like stardust essentially, right? Yeah, we're just a little grain of salt in this whole little thing too. Yeah, universe um, is big, man. That's the thing, and it's like okay, if we have a creator, then who's the creator's creator, right? Mm-hmm. And then who's that creator's creator? And then you ever think we're like this? Failed science experiment on some aliens jar, like jar and on a shelf, <laughs> just put away from a high school experiment. Like his 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 experiment was just to create a reality, kind of like the Rick and Morty episode where he's got a whole universe in his fucking trunk that's powering his like spaceship engine. <laughs> yeah. So then there's like another universe inside that one. Like that's what it yeah. could be too. Like yeah, could just be we're all living inside one giant fourth dimensional being. Dude, you know what? That's crazy. I was thinking. I, I was, like, super high one time, and I was thinking about, like, okay, I don't even know I have to precursor with it being high. It's, like, all of a sudden, these deep thoughts are related to you mm-hmm. being high. Like, you have to be high to think these deep thoughts. No, I was yeah. thinking deep since I was a little kid. Right. But I think I was, though. But here's the thing. Like, imagine the Earth, right? And I'm sure this thought has been out there millions of times because no idea is original. There's nothing new under the sun. It's never what you do but how it's done. Mm-hmm. But the Earth is like so imagine like a red blood cell right inside of our stream of blood inside of an organ inside of our meat bucket inside of us inside of the ecosystem inside of the earth right it's like those russian dolls inside of uh the universe which is inside of like the Russian dolls that get smaller yeah, yeah. and smaller, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to cut you off or anything, but no, no. I'm glad you brought this up. Because, mm-hmm. like, sophomore year of college, this is when I got really deep into philosophy because I was taking courses on it. And I was writing, like, these 10 page papers and things. It was just pages. getting me to, I was super on Adderall, too, <laughs> but I was getting really into the thought of it all. And I had this epiphany, too. It was helping me, like, with depression, too, because I was thinking about death a lot and life and death and just trying to understand it all. Mm-hmm. So I had, like, it wasn't a homework assignment or anything. It was just me being curious and wanting to write down these thoughts I was having in the moment. But it was like titled my my attempt to understand the world around me or some shit like that. But uh, one of the topics I went on is kind of like the Russian doll theory. where So we're made of billions of cells, right? Uh-huh. In our microscopic <laughs> level. The cells aren't aware enough to actually know that we're, that they're me, you know? Yeah. But... Say I get sick or something, and the cell's having a problem, I can go in and get medicated and manipulate my cell. I'm manipulating those billions of cells yeah. from a th- from a third dimensional level. They're like two dimensional. So I feel like we're the cells of like maybe Earth or like a higher dimensional creature that we're all supporting, and mm-hmm. it can manipulate us unknowingly in order to benefit or hurt itself, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Oh, and me and like kind of by you know by, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so it's like we're add, living in the belly of a fourth dimensional turtle or some shit. Like yeah, no, beast. I get it. It's I not get a it. turtle. It's not like a physical thing because we can't see it or fathom what a fourth dimensional creature looks like. But yeah. we could be like the cells of that. No, I get or it. Or even Earth. Yeah. So to add to mm-hmm. that too, like religion and all these things that we as humans decide upon, right? These moral guidelines and. You know, making the world a better place, right? Yeah. Think about that, like, that, um, what, are the, what do you call it? That statement, making the world a better place. Mm-hmm. Who, okay, so is it because we need to keep this, you know, this being, whatever, you know, keep it functional? Just like the cells inside of us, I'm sure that if they were conscious, their statement would be, Making the body a better place, you know. They don't even know what they're doing. No, but I'm saying I said if they were, if conscious, they were conscious, like, yeah, their statement would probably yeah. be, "We got to make the body a better place." You know, <laughs> we like, got to get Logan upright. We have to moving. put in the work when these mm-hmm. germs come in. We have to kick their ass. And then some red blood cells are like, "Man, I don't want to kick their ass, man. I'm trying to watch the office, dude. I'm not trying to do my job, man. I'm, I'm sick. I ain't coming into work today. We need you. We need to fight off these germs. Otherwise, they're gonna get cancer. Cancer's gonna run all over the body, dude. I don't want." to man i told your ass i'm done bitch <laughs> they'll pay me enough for this bitch rent is crazy right now <laughs> you know and it's like that's just a whole nother level so yeah that makes total sense mm-hmm. i like that uh um uh, but one part the the nihilistic side of me thinks we're the bacteria of that creature well yeah for sure humans we're, are shit. we're decaying it in a way 
Humans are fucking stupid, dude. One I of my favorite humans. lines on the Total po- Totally Popery album yeah. was uh, I f- sampled Phil Collins that uh, Another Day in Paradise. I think I said, got to stop all this violence. Are you an organism or a virus? Do you support the system? Admire it. Or support the, vic- the, support the victims of tyrants. Mm. And that kind of sums up what we are just kind of talking about a bit. Like, yeah. you can kind of choose to either be the one that helps out the planet in this fourth dimensional thing mm-hmm. that we call maybe God. Or we could be the virus of it all, too. Yeah, dude. Which Think I feel like that. we're Who's always constantly trashy. fighting each other, you know? Well, also, like, when plastic first came out, I was watching ads for, like, plastic back in the day. And it was like this new thing that's like indestructible, you know, oh, use your plastic, whatever, instead of this, you know, plastic. It's this new thing that's go ahead and throw it in the ocean. No big deal. Indestructible, you know, like, yeah, they're marketing it. It's a soup out in the ocean right now. They create all these different products from plastic, right? It's like this new thing that's replacing whatever they were using before. So they're now using everything for plastic that you possibly can because it's so much cheaper, whatever. So now everything's being made with plastic, but nobody thought they're all thinking with money, right? And like, how can, oh, this is cheaper and it's strong and okay, let's just do it. But it's like, did anybody think, all right, but what are we going to do to get rid of it when we're done with it? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was like, it feels like an afterthought. And it's all of a sudden like, all right, well, we're going to recycle, but recycling is not regulated. I mean, my own damn roommate doesn't even know a thing about recycling. God bless his heart. but. It's only because he just doesn't understand that it helps the system. You know, like mm-hmm. you have to put in your work. He as obviously a human. hasn't been to a landfill. I've been to a, I've yeah, seen a landfill. And I'm like, landfill. good God. Because these people's jobs, there's people who their jobs are to facilitate this trash. That's why we have the recycling so trash. So much, dude. And the trash trash. It's already so much to even take care of all this mm-hmm. shit. The least you can do is make sure it goes in the right one. The right you know spot. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. come on, man. That's just playing your part. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. We all got to kind of play our part. Did you see that? Uh, sure did, have you seen that Futurama episode where they just like sent all their garbage into uh, into space? No, but that sounds like something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Futurama. like at the like uh, the year 2000 something. Uh, there was so much garbage that they just put it on like giant bars in the ocean, mm-hmm. but that was getting to be too much. So then they flew it up into space, and then now in the year three thousand something, they came back, and now it's like like, <laughs> it's a, like a meteor a coming into the, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> so perfect. They have to go up and blow it up like it's Armageddon. I <laughs> hope basically. that that happens. And then yeah. was it did a whole bunch of trash like rain down or something? Yeah, on them? yeah. I hope that happens to us, dude. That we're just probably not gonna, when I'm alive. Probably gonna send our garbage into space. I wouldn't doubt it. Man, that's I remember, a total like that's totally what a human thing would do. It's like put it off for future generations. Fuck it, we don't have to deal with it. Did I ever tell you I was like super scared of Armageddon when I was a kid? You like a Y two K guy or what? No, like when I was like Doomsday? young. When I was young, like before, within the ages of probably like eleven to sixteen, seventeen. So I went to church with my parents and I saw the movie Left Behind. Talking about like, you know, rapture uh, in the Christian religion of like, yeah. oh, when Jesus comes back, the good will go to heaven and the bad will whatever this be on earth to be ran by the devil for seven years. So Sounds like some Old Testament shit. Yeah, so the thing is, in the movie Left Behind, like that's kind of the deal, you know? And I saw that in Sunday school. And so I'm thinking, because this is church, I'm thinking that this is a real... Put the fear of God in you, Yeah, boy. dude, like... <laughs> I was scared, and I remember asking my friend's mom, like, okay, but what does the Bible say about, like, Jesus coming back? Like, I was so worried about Jesus coming back. I wanted to, I was scared it would happen Coming back like fucking Rambo with a machine gun. <laughs> He's just ready to fuck it up or what? No, like, yeah, just riding on a horse in the sky, and trumpets would be blown, and the moon would be blood red. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jesus. He has to come back. Hey, from the everybody. <laughs> hey, all my followers and people who believed in me, I told you I was real, bitch. <laughs> now, those of you who did not believe, shame on you. <laughs> all of you Buddhists and Muslims, you dumb asses. I told you I was the right one. You should have known. Everybody's wrong, bitch. You should have known when you see my beautiful white face that you knew I was the God. <laughs> 
God Nobody questioned because I had this white guy in the Middle East, but I am, bitch. So all of my followers, rise up. <laughs> and all of you non-believers who did not accept me into your heart, you are going to pay. Devil, come up. <laughs> See, I just picture him coming back, like I said before, Rambo with like a headband and a fucking the uh, bandolier around him and shit. He's just like... Jesus for revenge, you know, ready to go. <laughs> he's not giving revenge. He's coming to save lives. But well, anyways, he would have to come back like an anti-hero to fix this so, corrupt shit. So here's the thing: every night when I was in, when I was in, this mainly started when I moved to Kenya, and I was so worried about the end of the world. I remember I used to like check my parents' room to see. If, so I would check my sorry. parents' room to see. If, like, to listen to see if my dad was snoring. So is that way I know. Because in the movie, people were raptured when they were on the plane. And, like, yeah. the wife went to the bathroom, came back, and her husband's clothes were just there. But he was gone, you know? So oh. I was, like, always scared. Like, oh, man. Because I know my parents would go. Because they're, like, super lovely people. Like, mm -hmm. if anybody's going, it's them. But I was, you know, was worried about myself. Like, I cussed or whatever, you know. And, and I, you exploded. And I draw boobs. <laughs> At 11. <laughs> yeah. And I draw boobs and jack off in my robe. So, <laughs> so like, I was worried about, like, not going to heaven. So, every night, I would pray for my sins to be forgiven. I would, you know, dear God, please forgive me for my sins. I promise I want to say, dear God, please forgive me for my sins. Please come into my heart. And like, like I wanted to make sure that Damn, when I go to fear sleep, God was strong within you. <laughs> I want to make shit. sure when I go to sleep that nothing happens while I'm sleeping. You know, like I don't want it to happen, and then now I'm fucked because I didn't have the time. So what I pictured was if I wasn't sleeping, I pictured like, okay, the end of the world would come, and I would notice that it's happening, and then I would pray for forgiveness, <laughs> <laughs> and that would stop it. <laughs> no, not stop it. Then I would be able to be accepted. To, oh. You know. You accept like, the it's destruction. Not too late. Like, oh, it's not too late to be saved. Exactly. Oh god. So here's the thing, dude. Religion, you can't teach that shit to kids, man. It's fucked mm -hmm. up. It's like you're giving them this crazy psychology. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Because I wanted to get this point across too, with just my personal beliefs of religion. Is that I just think in today's society it's outdated. Yeah. I don't think we need religion to remind ourselves to treat each other like how we want to be treated. Yeah. That's kind of my stance on it, because it's like, I just go off of like, I don't treat people how I would want to be treated, you know? Like, if you're me and I'm you, you kind of believe that everybody's everyone kind of thing. Yeah. Then that's, I don't know, I feel like morals is like, it's beyond religion at this point. Well, We're like, we, we don't really need that traditional type of teaching to be a good person. I, I hear mean, you. just personally I in my you, but, experience. But let me add, let me counterpoint that, because yeah. there are a lot, and I get what you're saying. But there are a lot of benefits to the community and the community aspect of it. And the, yeah. the like the overall vibe of loving something greater than yourself and being selfless that you it's it might be harder to and you can do that with atheism or whatever too right but there's not necessarily like an atheist community that keeps you engaged and praise and, nothing <laughs> and um but the thing is though is yeah what's outdated is is the seriousness of it all you know yeah the, all the, the religion steps, is a good it's a good platform like shaving your beard and the tattoos are a sin and like yeah just outdated and treating women like, like shit mm -hmm. the thing is religion is a good what would you call it? Like a good outline and a, guideline. A life of, starter kit. <laughs> a good, yeah, like a guideline of how to be. Like if you live as Jesus Christ lived, you'll be a great person. But do you think people essentially need some form of teaching of that? Or that is they... the teachings. Jesus is the teachings. Everybody right, but... needs to be taught, dude. Even me, I still need to be taught That's constantly. True. I still need to be reminded constantly mm -hmm. of how to be a forgiving person, you know? I don't just hear it once and then it's just in me. I yeah. need to remind myself and teach myself these things on a daily basis. That's why we don't just motivate ourselves once and then we're going to the gym forever. Yeah, that's we need true. daily motivation. <laughs> you know, we yeah. need daily prayer, daily meditation. We need these things constantly because you're that's all part of life, right? Mm -hmm. We're always living in the moment. So it's not like I do this and I'm done. And then done forever. You know? I got and it. I got 100 percent I got I mean, this. like you said. Drink some coffee, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not energetic forever. I got to drink another coffee eventually. 
Which I might you know need another I mean? copy. <laughs> I don't, I, I, we're going to have to split one then. No, that's fine. But here's the thing. Religion is great. You know, it's just the problem is people who take it too seriously and take these words in the text yeah, that was verbatim. written thousands and thousands of years ago. Like, yo, it's not word for word. I just feel like it's not a thing to take super literally. No. Like, take the messages of being a better person out of that. Like, take the the moral of the stories, but don't just, like, break down everything like it was this all-knowing fact yeah. of life kind of thing. More or less... Try to just learn from the message it's trying to tell you. Yeah, dude. You know, not so much of, like, what the scenes are about. Mm-hmm. More or less, like, what's the meta version? Like, what, it, what's, what it's actually trying to tell you to make you learn and grow from it. Yeah. Not so much of, like, that dude actually was in the belly of a whale with Jonah for, like, three days. Like, you don't have to worry about if that's a real fiction or not. Yeah. It's about the, the message behind it. I don't exactly. really know that message, no, though, <laughs> for that one. But yeah. that's what's left to us mm-hmm. to interpret this art, right? These stories, to interpret them and get the meaning out of it as to what we want it to mean, right? Mm-hmm. And what speaks to us. But um, also, like, my, my pastor, for example, he is super down to earth. He's an amazing speaker, theological, spiritual, philosoph- philosophical thinker. He, and he loves the Wu-Tang Clan. He life. talks about like when he was a kid, how he lost his faith and everything, and he was oh, wow. really into philosophy and all this. And he actually talks about in church like evolution and the idea of um, quantum physics and stuff like that and quantum entanglement and all these things and how our, we're all just matter and you know, all Very this stuff. Very open-minded to other Super ideas. Super open-minded. Yeah. And he's also just recently wrote a book. He's written many, many books. He's super dope. He's a great writer, great speaker, but he recently just wrote a book um detailing the problems with the bible like mistakes and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and one of the financial backers of the church um either threatened or did back out because they're more of like a uh, more of like a what do you call it like stricter ideology or whatever and kind of like a roman catholic so they didn't do no not that no they're like baptist or whatever but they're more like old school like they didn't uh, they they didn't stand by, oh, that the Bible doesn't have mistakes in it, right? Even though he clearly outlines, like, many mistakes and many, like, missayings. Like, in this That's part of the Bible, thing. they said it's one thing. mistranslated over yeah. and over and over again to where it's like, it's not really the full word of God. It was whoever was writing those, uh, what they interpreted it to say at the time, yeah. what they thought it meant. Like someone so it's said very before, subjective, too, about like what's actually said, going on. He who controls the past controls the present and controls the future. Mm-hmm. So whoever was translating these Separating texts. in the history book, dude. Yeah. Like, you you got a certain agenda that you're trying to get across. And who knows if our history is even accurate these days, you know? Shit. Who knows, man? Written by the victors, dude. Yeah. Exactly. And like, how much, like Parks and Rec, right? How much valuable his, his, uh, historic shit that was burned in World War II because oh Hitler God. was obsessed with, like, the occult and just... He wanted to literally reform history itself. So he was burning all these like documents, especially like a lot of Jewish writers' books and things like that. So like a lot of educated people's material out there was completely burned away. Maybe even some of our history. I wonder if Hitler just had like a bad trip or something and then just went psycho on people. You Inter- know? I don't know. He did say a voice in World War I saved him from a, like a explosion. He was, I guess he heard a voice saying, like stay or turn right or run to your right. Then he did that, and then a bomb exploded like right next to him or some shit. But he also he was a big believer in the occult, the real society, which is trying to like it's basically like harnessing energy, mm-hmm. like magic energy kind of thing. And he was also into like Girls. aliens, extraterrestrial shit, dude. Girls, the females, yeah. I don't know. He could have been closeted. <laughs> He's an alien. So how do we, how do we know that? Uh, well, I guess some of the infos have an ancient aliens to so take that with a grain of salt. But he was interested in extraterrestrial tra- technology. There's apparently, uh, air quotes, a visitation that they had. The Nazis had like a uh, kind of like a Roswell incident with their own self, and maybe that's why they had more advanced technology than us too. We don't know. It's all conspiracy stuff. So believe what you want to. 
So I don't know why I looked this up earlier. We were talking about AI or something, or we were talking about um, Alan Iverson, gods within <laughs> gods, and stuff like that. No, not Alan Iverson, <laughs> but he's a god within a god. There's this thing where you don't even practice. There, uh, someone was using AI, and um, they used a computer neural network with the ability to. Uh, so it's essentially an artificial intelligence with the ability to learn using an open source project and set it to work on creating dinner recipes. So the result was after training the neural network to generate cookbook recipes by letting it look at tens of thousands of existing rep recipes. So they're basically using this open source thing, giving it access to tens of thousands of existing recipes and programming it to create its own recipes, this learning network, right? So it's learning oh. from reading tens of thousands of recipes learning about recipes and all of them and then now it's saying create your own so here's what it came up with oh the generated tiles titles can get a bit odd there's a creativity variable i can set when the network is generating new recipes and when i set it low it comes up with its best guess at the most quintessential recipe titles cream cheese soup cream of sour cream cheese soup chocolate cake parentheses chocolate cake chocolate 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 cake chocolate chicken <laughs> chicken chocolate. cake Ew. chocolate 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 that chocolate robot is not creative cake there's no taste buds chocolate chips chocolate chips with chocolate chips <laughs> what <laughs> hey want to hear how desperate i was oh, one wait. time at a friend's house what, are you... i they had so little food that i had to eat melted down peanut butter chocolate chips i just ate it like in a paste <laughs> So gross. I was so microwave? hungry, man. I was hungry and they had no food. You melted in the microwave? Yeah, they were like a family of eight. So they get groceries and it leaves in about a week. You never see them yeah. again. So yeah, I melted down chocolate chips in a microwave and ate it. Just like that. Like the robot that did. Is weird. <laughs> so when she tells it to get creative, things get even weirder. Oh, he wasn't even being creative yet? No, that was just low. The creativity variable was set oh, to low. Wow. So creative. Beef soup with swamp. Beef and cheese, chocolate chops and chocolate chips, crim grunk, garlic cleese, beezy mist, export bean spoons and pie shell, top if spoon and whip the mustard, chocolate pickle sauce, whole chicken cookies, salmon beef style chicken bottom, a little bit of star, cover meats, out of meat, completely meat circle, completely meat chocolate pie. What the fuck? Cabbage pot cookies, a little bit of artichoke pot cookies? gelatin dogs. Talking real pot cookies? And some crot pot cold water. What the fuck was that? Recipe from hell, dude. Sounds pretty good. That's a lot of shit. You got real creative. So there was also some AIs that were arguing with each other. Um... They like they put two eyes, two AIs together, or whatever, and two chatbots, and they were like arguing with each other about what? Let me see. Binary? No, it's one zero zero one zero one zero. It's zero zero one. Duh. That's no, not gonna tell. That's me. what the meaning of life is, bitch. Back to Reddit on Reddit. I learned how to fold a T-shirt in two seconds. So look that up, guys. Fold a T-shirt in two seconds. What? It's amazing. You just fold, fold, and boom. Damn. Same. Well, I actually want to get off of Reddit on Reddit real quick to bring up this uh, one thing I just remembered. Have you ever been, had sleep paralysis? Can we talk about sleep paralysis? Sure. Um, explain. So, it's I've like a lucid uh, dream. It's kind of like a lucid dream. So, it's a dream where you're conscious that you're sleeping, you can't move, and sometimes you experience shadow people. Mm, Does never, it sound familiar never, at all? No, nope, never seen shadow people. The fact that I'm like telling you this, you might actually experience it because you're more no. susceptible. That's no, what they say. Is I've like, heard of it before, and I won't because I am a holy and I, <laughs> I pray to God before I go to sleep. God what watches the fuck over am me, I then? and Shit. He comes into my heart. Well, as long as you got God in your heart, you should be fine. Yeah. But this will happen to me one time. Dear Lord, please save me. I had so. two experiences with sleep paralysis, but the second one was way scarier. So I'll just go into that one. Mm -hmm. So was it recent? No, nah, this was like high school. Um, I was sleeping, taking, I wasn't even trying to take a nap, but I just drifted into sleep, mm -hmm. laying in the bed, watching George Carlin stand up and I could still hear 
the the stand up, but I noticed that the screen was blurry. So I was still like I was asleep, but I was conscious of like the the room around me. Like yeah. I could see the TV. I just couldn't focus on the picture to the point where it was all a blur kind mm-hmm. of thing. There's me saying fucking kind of thing again. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm watching this the show, and I'm like, "Why is it so blurry? What's going on right now?" I'm like, "Am I sleeping?" I was having that thought during my sleep, and then this like deafening like noise, kind of like white noise, just coming into my hearing, where everything just kind of went silent, but it was like a sound of silence, where like it kind of was like a white noise that blocked out all the other noise, so I couldn't hear George Carlin anymore. And then I just got this weird feeling of, like, dread. This weird, like, existential kind of, like, feeling of, like, malice or something. And, uh... Holy crap. I got this... Yeah, I got this weird sensation to look to the left of me. Like, almost like something was forcing me to, like, look over in my bed. I was sleeping on the right side of the bed. And it was like this force was pulling me in. And it was this black figure laying right next to me. What the fuck? Yeah, it was a like a I don't in your know bed. Describe, yeah, it wasn't like it. Ah, it didn't ah, look like a goddamn human. Ah, yeah, bro. I'm getting chills actually talking about it right now. But yeah, it was like forcing me to look at whatever Can you sleep it was. Over tonight? Yeah, with that heat, with that weighted <laughs> yeah. blanket. I'm sure I'll get some sleep. But yeah, oh. I should have told you because people are more susceptible to actually have those dreams now. Why are you trying to input that into oh. my life? What the fuck? You should watch it on Netflix. It's creepy You could have just hell. told me about the shadow thing. You didn't have to say about how people are more susceptible to it. No, <laughs> that was just added fuckery. My experience. In the, my, uh, this is an experiment now. Now you're my guinea pig. I want to see if this happens to you. Well, if it does, I'm not telling you. You got the, you got the love of God in your heart. You're fine. Yeah, dear Lord yeah. will save me. But yeah, I felt like it was like sucking me in. It was weird. It, it was, was sucking scary. Yeah. It was like this black figure. It was hard to even like make out what it was, but it was like this endless void. A black it was like figure staring was into sucking a void. You off? Yeah, I got my rocks off. Oh, so it was, it was an endless void. So what happened then? After how did you get? Oh, out I of forced it? myself to wake up. I could, I could sense myself. I remember like yeah. I could feel my face like making this like scrunchy kind of motion, and then I like popped out of it. So did you go like, back to sleep? <laughs> no, not for a long time. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to fucking go to back. At uh, what time was it when you woke up? I don't know. This is seventy years ago. Bro. No, but you have to know. Like, like, like you didn't day. look at the time. Oh, it was during the day. Yeah, it was like it was still. You were napping. Light up. Yeah, it was like a nap. It's like it's probably like six o'clock. Holy fuck! Like after you, dinner, that happened to you during the day during, during the a nap. Day. Yeah, my first sleep paralysis was a little different. I felt like I was getting abducted. It was like a this inner speech was like happening it was echoing in my head and i felt like i was getting lifted up from my bed like slowly and then That's i woke crazy. up and i was like whoa and it was my dad like washing dishes in the kitchen and i just told him I'm like I had this weird ass dream that i was getting abducted yeah but that i think that was a sleep paralysis type of thing too dude I don't know. when i was young when i was going through that phase of end of the world stuff part of the sim- signs would be that uh the moon would turn blood red so every night before bed i would look out and see if the moon was red or not and I had a dream one time when I was at my dorm. I went to a boarding school for ninth, eighth and ninth grade. And I had a dream. I had a dream. Where I was stuck in my bed. I woke up. I was in my dorm, everything, but I couldn't move. And I, was, I saw, like, the outline of the door. Like, my room is dark. But the outline of the door was, like, shining through, like, this bright orange, dark orange kind of, like, light shining through like imagine like everything outside is rumbling and yeah. and the world is ending and everything is super red or orange and the lights just shining through the door and i was trying to yell at my roommate to wake up like dude what's going on you know but i couldn't scream i couldn't talk and i couldn't move either i was just stuck stuck there that's kind of like sleep paralysis yeah because yeah i couldn't i couldn't scream shout anything like that it was like traps you in it but yeah, definitely watch the documentary because it's interesting as hell. It's probably on Netflix. I think I'm going to pass. <laughs> on that. Are you good with scary movies? I hate scary movies. Yeah, are you like uh, I one can't, of those guys that can't even be in the room? I don't, wa- I don't like scary movies. I don't like watching them. I believe in the mantra, you are what you eat. Okay? And my mom always taught me, be careful of what you put into your ears and your eyes, young Matthew. 
don't. I think she was talking about like <laughs> paint and things like that. <laughs> no, no, like the thing is, is that and toys and you know how like much of a joyful person I am, or I can be. You are a hoot. <laughs> so you're the, just the greatest. That's because to it. I try not to input too much. Don't put that energy, in, you know. Like, like imagine if we're a computer, right? Like, you don't yeah. want to input too many viruses on your hard drive. So, like, I don't want to input too much bullshit viruses, these make believe things, because I hate scary dreams. I hate all of those kind of things. I don't, I can't stand them. So, I want to do whatever I can to avoid myself from doing that. When I watch these scary movies for no reason other than like the fear, the pleasure of fear, you know, like yeah, a fake fear. Yeah, that. It's like, yeah, it's unto that, but I'd rather just watch something funny instead and make me laugh. You know what I mean? I, there's I something mean, I always prefer comedy of a horror, but I actually yeah. do like horror genres. See, I, th- I can't There's that do certain it. side of me, that dualistic side of me, that likes fucked up shit. I mean, I watch it way. when I'm on a date or when I'm hanging out with a girl or something, but, but it, it I'm never not even really watching scares it. I'm just me, breathing on me. her neck. You know, it gives me that little rush thrill of anxiety if it's the right movie. Oh, dude, that shit scares me. Scares me. But, like, I really don't actually get that scared of it. Sometimes it's more like, I like when it's kind of based on more truer events, but at the same time, I just like some of the when stories. When it's based when it's on done truer right, events, that's scary it's shit. It's such a hit or miss genre because it could just be that waste of time movie where it's just like a, the typical horror movie where mm-hmm. these group of people are out doing something and there's this killer around and he's taking them off one by one. And it's like, it's got a very okay, yeah, cliche those aren't kind as scary. of I'm setup. not talking about those. But I like the movies with real substance. Like you can take that genre and make a great movie out of it because you can like ins- paranormal type movies and stuff. Yeah, like Insidious and stuff. That's that's a good movie. You have the Garage, Twenty Eight Days Later. There was some really good horror movies. The out Ring, there. Like The Ring, um, Chainsaw Hostel. Massacre, Hostel. Yeah, ho- well, I like Saw better. That has a good story to it. See, it's scary Hostel's though. More dude. Of like the, that's more the gore factor. They're just trying See, to gross you out. But if I ever watch a movie like that, I need to watch like five episodes of The Office or The Simpsons or something afterwards. Like I can't, I can't just watch that movie and then just go about every day, whatever. I need to watch something happy and uplifting to just wash Bounce all that out, bullshit. Clean your like you don't just take a shot of some kind of horrible out like Everclear without <laughs> washing it down with something, you know? Some nice wine. Like you can even people who take shots of hard liquors, they put ice in it and shit, you know? Like I mean, and you could take shots, but it feels good. See, the thing is just like scary movie. You can watch a scary movie, that's fine. You can take a shot of hard liquor, that's fine. But it feels a lot better to wash it down with something afterwards, even a little bit of water or something, you know? No, I feel yeah. That makes sense. Like, I washed that scary movie shit down. I drown it out with happiness, you know? <laughs> like Teletubbies or something afterwards, but I right? I never choose to watch it. There's so many other things that I want to Can watch. If, I, if I'm going to be watching TV, I want to watch something funny or whatever. Otherwise, I want to watch documentaries. There's something about October, interesting though, that gets things. me into that, mo- that mindset, man. It's Halloween. I know, but that whole month, like, I'm in it. Like, I Halloween. just binged American Horror Story for the second time. Just wow. like uh, not the whole thing, just the the seasons I like the most and want to mm-hmm. get caught back up on. But I just I was in it, man. I love that. I love that series. What is that show? Anyway, is Story? that like a is Super it a dope. different episode every time? Yeah, but they connect. And the cool thing about that is like it's the same actors for the most part, but they play different characters. But it's a different story every single time. Kind of like a Final Fantasy, the video game's a different kind of like story every single one, even though they're mm-hmm. named the same kind of. Um, Sounds stupid. No, it's actually really dope. I hate it. Yeah, well, it hates you too. That's one of those ones that has like good storyline between it all. Mm-hmm. It's not just like trying to scare you. Like I don't like those movies that are just trying to scare you. Yeah, try hard. There's so many bad horror movies out there that's hard to get somebody into that genre. Yeah, just like there's really so many the bad ones. comedies out there. Mm-hmm. Honestly, though, even any like even a bad comedy, I'd still like. I just like anything that's happy, you know? Mm -hmm. Good vibes only here, friend. (laughs) Good vibes only. Take that bad shit out my face, bitch. (laughs) You better ask somebody. But there is, like, something that pulls me into that darkness, too. Like, just getting into that mindset. It's just interesting sometimes. I'd always choose light over darkness, but, you know, even playing those role-playing video games where you can be evil and good, I try to find that good balance. Like, you but do a couple a, bad things here and But there. in a video game, you're yeah. going to lean towards the dark side. Yeah. Because it's your fantasy realm. And uh-huh. Fuck it. You're not actually hurting people's feelings out there. Yeah, like in the video game, I'll order a bunch of food and leave without paying. 
Yeah, dude, what a dick move. Like, that's what I do in Grand Theft Auto. I don't, like, mess around with prostitutes or kill people or run over people. I mean, I run over people. I don't tip, (laughs) you know? (laughs) You asshole. I walk into the store, grab a CarMax, Mm -hmm. and walk out. And get out without the guy even knowing. That way, you can get less than a star. I run red lights sometimes on that game, yeah. Yeah, yeah that way. Do it. Yep. Yeah. Well, running a red light is going to get you at least one star. If you if the cop sees you do it. Yeah. If no cop, no it. stop. Just like in the real world. Dude, talking about it right now makes me really want to play Grand Theft Auto. I, I haven't played in a long time. But I, I just want to play wanna, Fable. Like, I was thinking about Fable three when I brought that that up about. I have Fable, but I've never played shit. it. That's a game that really depends on your consequences. Two was the best. I'd say it was the best. Best story. Mm-hmm. Um, it was cool. You can like buy businesses out and shit too. Like you can buy properties and have kids and kind of have like this side life off of the whole main storyline. I thought Fable was like medieval. Kind of is. It's like very fantasy, kind of um, very Lord of the Rings ish. Meets... So you can have kids. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, it's 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 very like Skyrim ish too, where you can like do all these other extra stuff in the whole world. Um. Three was a little weird though. It felt rushed. The game felt totally rushed. And it was very decision driven because you were like the king of mm-hmm. the land and there was this inevitable war that you knew was coming your way. So you had to like go to these meetings and have certain decisions on like uh your kingdom. Like one of them was like you can either turn this place into like a, a preschool or something, this district, mm-hmm. or into like a brothel. And the advantages of the, the preschool is obviously it's like the good guy choice. And then the brothel will actually make you more money. And that's always the constant thing was like, you have to save up enough money for this inevitable war that's coming. But you also don't want to be a complete asshole and like try to balance good things with bad things. For me, I was trying to find such a balance that I, like, I wanted people to like my me more than actually what's like saving up. For. I didn't think it was going to be a huge deal if you didn't have as much money for the war effort. But... At the end of the big giant war, the end of the game, I didn't have enough money to like f- fuel back our economy, and apparently a lot of people died in the war. So after the, I beat the game, there was like nobody there because I didn't save up enough money to like save the resources for people to survive. Yeah. And it became like an unplayable game afterwards, which sucks because that's one of those games you can even play after you beat the story. But when there's literally nobody there besides the people that are at the stores, you know? It was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that game as much. It's, it felt super rushed. But the second one, recommend that one. Oh, so Highly just recommend. start from the second. Yeah. Okay. Even the first one's good, but second one's the best. Yeah. Definitely. Well, um, I was thinking we could try a little game of creating a story or maybe Sentence some game? sentences. Yeah. But Let's try saying it. one word after another. Okay. Get a little creative. Get them creative juices flowing. Get them flowing. juices flowing, bro. It's like so, one o'clock in the morning right now. We need to keep this up. Oh, Get our minds going. One thirty. Late. Is it? Past Damn. my bedtime. Damn, son. So I'll start with candles. Are keeping us warm. And I never stick them in my butthole. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but I did stick a couple <laughs> in my <laughs> ears. Ears? <laughs> I don't know. Penis. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I never stick them in my bottle, Lit but I did stick my a couple dick in my on fire. Glasses usually. Create sight out of unsight <laughs> <laughs> when they permulate. <laughs> I don't even know what? what that word is. What is permulate? Set me up with that. Permulate. Permulate. permulate? Did I say permulate or permulate? I think it's a permulate. Permulate. Is that even a word? Permulate is. To cause. So when they cause. Yeah. When they permulate. When they cause. When they <laughs> permulate. <laughs> satisfaction. Because. 
they like. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> to be on bitch. What? <laughs> bitch what? <laughs> on bitch? Uh, no. They like to be on bitch? Shit. They like to be on shit? No, bitch shit. You could say shit. You could say... When glasses <laughs> like to permulate because they like to be on bitch shit. <laughs> this one's going nowhere. <laughs> okay. You start. <laughs> It doesn't work when I do it. You start. Hmm. Television. Houses. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I'm thinking like what? I'm thinking like television houses these little lights houses that create television. No, no, what? television. You just How... totally switched the Dude, subject. Dude, no, no. You have to look at it from different perspective. Television <laughs> houses. Ah, uh, you know, it, television it, 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 houses yeah. thought. <laughs> <laughs> I just farted. fart. Just fart your next one. Television thought houses farts. thought out intelligent matter. Two. I'm done with the sentence. Let's start with <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> one more. One more. One more. And we might have to call her quits. Porcupines. Stick. <laughs> specifically. Porcupine stick specifically. <laughs> okay. Porcupine stick specifically. Buttholes. The. Uh, did you go to first grade? <laughs> Do you know how to create a sentence? You know, I nouns just, and I'm adverbs. Just scapegoating and... The and. <laughs> Uh, That's how I get away with I'm it. I'm done. Kangaroos jump very high when they are in you can say uh a uh, uh, <laughs> fire and the internet is a bitch and <laughs> It doesn't know that it's obsolete and kangaroos <laughs> are bitches also because the <laughs> tax. <laughs> So hey, it's tax season. <laughs> it is. Do your taxes, yo. We got till April, though. We're good. What Fuck time are man. we at right now? We're at hour 23. It is 1.30. Yeah. We might have to do a slightly shorter episode. Might save on fucking file space. Yeah, yeah. Want to do fine. one more Reddit on Reddit so we can leave on a good note so that stupid sentence shit? Well, I was thinking we could leave on a <laughs> You got a topic nice to quote. end on? Oh, nice quote? Yeah. Fuck yeah, let's do it. More insights from Pinky. Praise be to Buddha. <laughs> loading, loading, loading. Scrolling. Oh, it's got a buffer. Man, I'm fucking tired. I've been talking for four hours, bro. Total. More than that, probably. Yeah, that's crazy. Man, double time's killing me. Oh, I probably look so tired on camera. Mm-hmm. Sleep good at night. Okay. Life exists only at this very moment. And in this very moment, it is infinite and eternal. For the present moment is infinitely small. Before we can measure it, it has gone. It's and yet, gone. it exists forever. But it's there forever. So if we break it down. Break it down. Life exists only at this moment. Right now. And in this moment, right now. This moment right now. It is eternal and infinite. Damn. Wrap your mind around that. Eternal and infinite. Can it we wrap our mind around stop. eternal and infinite? It doesn't stop. It doesn't, it doesn't stop. stop. But it where does it begin? Where does it end? It doesn't. It doesn't end. There's only now. 
Damn. For the present moment, it's infinitely small. How small? Because before we can like measure it. Like your pinky-sized dick? You can't measure it. Because before, it's immeasurable. Before you can measure it, it's already gone. If you try Ooh. to grasp the present moment, yeah. you try to say, oh, this is it. This is how long it is. Oh, wait, it's just passed because that was that moment. But now it's this moment. But this moment is It's a new right moment. Now. How do you measure in the new thing now? Yeah, you well, can't now, measure the old thing when the new thing is So let's coming. measure this moment right here. Oh, nope. it's too long. Too it's late. Too good. You take your tape measure out and measure it. You can't measure the damn moment. You, you can't. can't take out any little scientific capsules and try to grasp the milliliters of the moment's gravity mass. All you can do. But you can take a moment to measure your dick. Before we can measure it, it's gone. Mm hmm and yet, it exists forever. It's in the cloud? No. <laughs> I still don't understand the cloud. The cloud is simple. The cloud... <laughs> it is elementary, my dear Watson. It evaporates water from the earth. Not that cloud, bro. Recycles it and rains like it Like the cloud, like where this podcast is going to exist forever. Oh, in that, the cloud. that's in the sky. There's not a physical spot that the internet is part in. There's um. There's this unfathomable, uh, infinite amount of storage called the yeah, cloud these servers. days. Yeah, there's servers. It's called servers. It's nuts. Servers that hold data. Yeah. Okay. And compress data, whatever it may be. And our data goes into the cloud. There's whatever the clever, the clever Apple people named it to get to the minds of all these peons out here. You know? Oh, the cloud! It's in the sky, honey! It's in the sky! It's the only you way to explain clouds. it to people. It's not, you dumbasses. And guess what? Internet isn't real. <laughs> Don't say that. And you know Don't what else isn't dare. real? You know what else isn't real? What isn't? Your stupid little job. Oh, fuck. The thing that you think you're doing oh, something shit. at. You think you're working on something, bruh? Be easy you on You ain't working guys, on man. shit, bruh. You ain't doing oh, shit, bruh. Man. You freaking wasting all your time, bruh. <laughs> you lame sauce, You don't even man. know what's going down, dude. You you sitting uh, right now, sitting down. You trying to do em. something. You don't even know what you're doing you because what you're you, doing. before you do it, it's gone. And yet it exists forever. Damn. Like, Break your job down. is so unimportant mm -hmm. that nobody even cares, bruh. Whoa. Like, when someone asks you that you haven't seen in a long time, you haven't seen this person for a while, and they say, hey, what have you been up to, man? You don't even have an answer because you ain't doing shit. Oh, damn. You don't want to admit that either. You don't want don't to admit, admit that. that. But you say, man, you know, I've just been working on myself. You know what I'm saying? I've just been chilling. <laughs> I mean, I'm working on a few things. If working on yourself is just sitting here eating Cheetos and watching The Office, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm working on myself, man. But, well, let, let's not end it just yet because I want it. I do. I'm glad I brought this up because I do want to say this thought came to me the other day because somebody asked me, like, Hey, man, you know, like, just regular banter between humans. Hey, man, you know, you got any plans for the weekend? And it was at that very moment that I realized my life is boring. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, I don't. And it's like, I'm kind of mad at you for, like, like, okay, I get it. We're just trying to communicate with each other, and, you know, it's just banter. But it's like... Man, that's kind of a private question, bro. Like, <laughs> we're just why well, you gotta put me on blast? I'm trying to catch like, up. Like everybody you. around here. So here's the thing: like all these people around us at work and everything. Hey, you got any plans for the weekend? You know? No, I'm a miserable piece of shit. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. I don't do fucking shit. I'm just trying to do my job. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't wanna, have time to think about things I outside go of home. work. You know, next time somebody asks me that question, I'm gonna make up some elaborate thing. Yeah, man, so I'm going to be eating it, this exquisite cheesecake from New York. I got it sent FedEx last night. I'm going to eat it tonight when I get home. As soon as I get done eating that, I'm going straight to the skydiving clinic. I'm going to fall as Damn. high as the sky can go. That's and, my plan for today. And then on Sunday, I'm going to climb Mount Everest, and I'll be back time for Monday for, for work. I will be flying in and out of Mount Everest. I'm going to fly straight to the top. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck all that, the climb, the journey stuff. I just want to get to the top. I just need that pick, bro. Shortcut me to the top. You know what I'm saying? I need that pick. <laughs> so I'm doing that. People what are you die doing? for that picture, man. What are you doing? I'm doing that. <laughs> what do you got going now, on? Now, what are you doing? Why is, now your life is miserable, bitch. I just went up to you. But, man, it's like, yeah, so you got any plans for the weekend? Well, that could be somebody yeah, you know, set up to actually off. want to do something with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> jack off in my robe. <laughs> I bet you still have that fucking crusty ass robe. <laughs> I wish. 
<laughs> Old habits die hard, huh? Oh, man. Well, oh, poor shit, Rome. man. Should we wrap this thing up? Wrap it up like a Christmas Let's present. wrap it up, man. Wrap it up like a baby's Thanks ass. Thanks for listening to the Totally Potpourri Podcast. If you're watching the video version of this shit and you like this shirt that I'm wearing, you can go on officialloganmichaels.com. Get your crew next, man. $30. $30 if you holla. If you catch me at a show and I'm selling them at the merch table, I'll give you $5 off to save on the whole shipping and handling fees and whatnot. But yeah. Uh, it's going to be a good time at Minneapolis. This video won't come out uh, before then, so we'll tell you how it goes afterwards. If you go to Logan's website, loganmichaels.com, yeah. and you type in the hashtag, hashtag uh, the code slash Logan Michaels, you'll get 5% off your next order, and I, that's a I, Matt Man guarantee. I don't think that's a thing. That's a Matthew <laughs> guarantee, and those are good for 30 minutes. Now people minutes. are going to complain and give us bad yelps because I didn't give them a discount that didn't exist. I don't think anybody's going to be complaining. Uh, I don't know if they, they might be. But yeah, um, check out Third Fall Podcast with my boy Half Pint Kyle Adams. After you check this one out. Well. Yeah, but check this one out as well, man. And, uh, and also, we're taking suggestions for names, and we're also taking suggestions for girlfriends. If you have any, um, what? No, like <laughs> if you have any, you know, suggestions for up. girls that may want to go out on a date with us or want to get to know us more, please let me know <laughs> because I am searching for love in all the wrong places. We'll do this like awkward thing where we're like double dating two girls on the podcast and we're asking them super personal questions on blast with the camera on yeah also if yeah, you have you a girl guest blast, that do it. if you have a girl guest that will don't mind answering the question about the how, female perspective yeah their sexual desires orgasms. we're just let curious us know. we're just curious people, i want to know man. how often you master want to know the female body perspective yep it's a female perspective in general how often do you masturbate how long does it take you to reach climax and how strong is the desire to do so That'd be a great question to be answered. <laughs> so if right you, now it's a mystery. If you don't feel comfortable coming on the show, please send us a message and we will read it aloud on the next podcast. And you can be... Um, Where can they follow you, dude? Follow me. I know you're not on social media as much, but... You know, true leaders don't <laughs> tell people... Where to follow? We just people lead. Just congregate, baby. We just lead, and people will follow. So I feel nice. as though, wow, as long as I keep leading and doing a great job as the leader, people will follow. And truly, all I need them to follow is this podcast because I ain't saying shit on Facebook. I'm hey. not saying anything, and neither are all you dumbasses Ooh. out there thinking that you're making little thoughts Ooh. and stuff, little Shots things. Fired, yo. Ooh. Your little, your little moments. Easy. That, These guys are supposed to listen to our show. <laughs> your, little, your little moments that come and go. You know what I'm saying? You you make a thought and you post it. You get a few likes and now it's gone because you've already drowned it out with 500 memes that you didn't create. You think you're creative for it. You see it and it makes you laugh and you're like, oh, this is funny. I can relate to this. Let me share it because it was my idea. No, it wasn't your idea. You stole it from someone and that's theft. And it's been going on for ages now. This is fucked up. <laughs> We've got meme theft going on. Real meme creators are not getting the credit that they deserved. And all these people out here thinking that they're doing something, sharing these memes. Hey, look at this meme I found. I found it. I found it. This is like it. Like it. Like it. Like it. You were super into this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a final tangent from Pinky, man. Thanks for tuning in to Tuesdays from Pinky. Or Tuesdays with Pinky. This is episode three. And follow us on the Facebook. Don't lick my mic, dude. Come I on. wasn't licking it. I was <laughs> pretending. Making love to it. Anyways, TPP Podcast. Find that shit on Facebook. Follow that shit. Oh, look at that beautiful guy, man. Mm. I'm sucking it in. Oh, shit. Thanks, guys, for listening or watching. And uh, we'll be here next week, baby. Peace, peace in the Middle East and everywhere else. This is totally I'm